Are you always on the lookout for fun new ideas for treat holders? Well then, you are going to love my owl treat box that I made with a square pillow box thinlet die. Come and watch and I'll show you how fun and easy it is to make. I'm using the square box pillow die to make my owl treat box. But I want you to see the other great dies that are included in this set. You've got a candy cane, leaves, pumpkins. We have here Christmas trees, a snowflake, and even a tag set. But for today's project, I'm using this die. And then you need something to die cut in. And I have my Big Shot die cutting machine and the magnetic platform. You could use a multi-purpose platform that comes with the purchase of a Big Shot, but if you're using any of the metal dies like thinlets, framelits, and edgelets, invest in a magnetic platform. So we need a cutting pad and then our paper. My paper is this early espresso polka dot pattern from the Neutrals Designer Series Paper Stack. And this is cut to 5 by 12. And I'm going to need two of these. So what we're going to do is, do you see there's a little lip on here? That is the cutting edge. And this is just a little tiny. That's going to do the creasing, but this cutting edge is much deeper. So that needs to be down onto the paper. And then, because we have creases, you might think we need a crease pad, but the Stampin' Up! Holiday catalog that this is in, it tells us to use the standard cutting pads. And that's what I did without even thinking about it and it worked beautifully. So, standard cutting pad. And here we go. Line these up and crank it through. Welcome to StampingSmiles.com. I'm Shelly Godby, the owner and CEO of Stamping Smiles. And for 14 years I've been teaching others how to create their own hand stamp smiles. And so see this pops right out. We have our creases right here. I can do that one. And so I need a second one, and then I'm going to show you how to put the two together. So now we have both of our die cut pieces that we'll be putting together, but first we have to fold along those score lines. And right here we have to do this curve. You know, years ago I downloaded a pillow box pattern and printed it, you know, cut it all out, and what, what stopped me was that curve. To be able to get a crease in there, I, I didn't have you know anything that could crease nicely. I used my bone folder, and that wasn't pretty, trying to follow a, a curved line. And even less prettier was the result. So that got abandoned, and now we've got this die that makes it easy. So with that in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I hope this goes okay, trying to do this. Well, it is. Let me show you. We're going to start at the corner and I pinched it right there. Let's go ahead and find this other one. In the light, we'll turn it, I can see it. See, now that I have those, look, it just did a beautiful crease job and I follow along. And normally I'd be using my bone folder, but this is, you know, paper and that's doing okay. So let's do this again. All right, so let's go into this corner. If you can't see it, you can feel it but I find it easier if I can see it, but it does go all the way to that corner. So let's pinch this side, come over here, and with that folded first, it makes it easy to find that corner. Let's pinch that, and then I do have my finger here supporting it on the opposite side, so I can follow along. Actually, my finger came out, it started there, and look, easy to do was really concerned, and I shouldn't have been. <laughs> I should have known Stampin' Up! would have gone, had a great die for us. So now we have to put these two pieces together. And let's pay attention to our pattern. Okay. That doesn't quite line up. Let's try this. Okay, look, it continues. That's what we want. And so this piece, we each, you know, we have two of these flaps that are going to be stuck to each other. So, since this will be on top, we'll put the adhesive on this side of the flap. And I'm talking this out because I have to really think about that stuff. And my adhesive is going to be the tear and tape. Oh my goodness, love this stuff. So again, let's think about this. Where it's going to hit on here is out here is where we really want it sealed. I think we have a tendency to come over here, but the seal is going to be right there. So let's put this along. And it's going to cover the whole, we've got that whole area there, so we can go the entire length if we like. Great. 
and because I went over we will need to use the scissors but it does just tear isn't that fantastic if I hadn't gone the entire length we wouldn't need our paper snips but I do want this to have that great hold okay so that and then again all right so we need to do this one too really really like this tape fantastic and let's trim that off and then we'll put those together and we're going to line up make sure our pattern it wouldn't be the end of the world but since we can why not why not have it line up so it looks good and that's not the way this is right oh yes a continuation okay so let's peel this off and then for me this was just the easiest way to do this let's line up then I can see the edge of that score line got my adhesive beautiful all right so now this one really easy because we've just done the lineup part peel that off and come over here and it's just going to fold right down onto it beautiful and then these just come together <laughs> a beautiful beautiful thing and without even me trying when I did it the first time they even interlocked very cool it's all self-closing we don't need to put anything else around it if we don't want to at all there we go see how it's self-locked very cool die and wasn't this easier than you thought it was going to be so now let's go ahead and decorate it to turn our pillow box into an owl. Besides being easy to put together, another thing I like about this square pillow box thinlets die is that we can create our box and then fill it later. <laughs> All right, so but we need to decorate. So I have here five Stampin' Up! punches, the tree punch, two inch circle, one and a half inch circle, one and a quarter inch circle, and half inch. So let's take them in order. Let's start with the tree punch and we're going to lock, unlock that and I have here some tangible twist cardstock we're going to punch his beak or bill all right and that's looking about right perfect I like how easy the Stampin' Up! punches are to hang on to and do things upside down so I was able to see how much that I was getting if I did it like this I'd be guessing and then once you're done push together and lock it and look how these store I have them all on my shelf stored like this and then you have the image on the end so you can see it great great punches okay so now our two inch circle punch and some whisper white cardstock this will be his belly again love how we can just do all this upside down because that was a small piece of paper but I was able to know that I had that centered in there all right so we're building our pieces and for our one and a half inch circle punch I have here Delaf Daffodil Delight cardstock you know what and my color choice well they're coming from the Into the Woods designer series paper and we'll be using this too and so now we're working on his eyes we need a couple of these fantastic and then our one and a quarter inch punch well more for his eyes and some more Whisper White cardstock Whisper White, that's the neutral in my Into the Woods Designer Series paper. And one more punch left. Look how fast that goes. See, you push that to unlock it. Some uh, basic black. Fantastic. And so, you know how we're going to put these together. Or maybe you don't. So we're going to build his eyes. So we're going to start with, I have here Fast Fuse Adhesive. And we're going to one time you slide one way all right so here we go the white and the yellow for his eyes okay let's do another one and so the next time let's come and slide this way why I'm sliding in different directions that keeps the tape centered on the roller it was going to one side on me and then I have to put it back over and I did it without tearing it thankfully 
But then I was at the Founders Circle vacation and that we were given that tip. Slide one way, then slide the other. And I haven't had any issues since. So now um, for the center of his eyes. All right, there we go. And I want them looking off. He's looking off to the side for me. And if you have a hard time in a small area like this, what you could do is a mini glue dot as well. Okay, so we've got that. We've got his eyes. We've got his beak. We've got his belly. Now what we need are wings. And so that's what I'm using this designer paper for. I have here my paper trimmer. Love this. I keep the cutting blade at the top. This track is so long you can put a 12 by 12 piece of paper in there and never need to take the cutting or scoring blade out. And so and then my scoring blade, see this is the light one, and I keep that at the bottom. So all I want to do is score this in half. I'm going to lay this on here, and I don't need this to be perfectly lined up, but if I did, I've got all those beautiful grids. Lock that in place, and let's score that. Okay, so now I've got this scored so I can fold it in half. And then with my paper snips, we're just going to go ahead and freehand a wing. All right. Okay, what I did find out about myself is that I didn't cut the same way twice. <laughs> the same size twice, so let's use this for a pattern. Let's just set this on here. Okay, it'd be easier for me to cut this direction since I am right-handed. <laughs> set this on here and then trim a second one. Now I've got two wings that are the same size, and isn't this paper adorable? Too cute. All right, so let's go ahead and put it all together. Because of the curve of the pillow box die, my choice of adhesive will be mini glue dots. When paper is laying flat against each other, like the eyeballs that we built, you know, fast fuse or snail adhesive like that. But for the curve, this has good strength. So let's take these out and uh, you peel it back so you can see it in the light. There we go. And we don't want to touch these. So let's go ahead and start with his belly because we need that for placement. And let's put these dots along the outside edge because remember we're going along this curve. We can be generous with these. How adorably cute is this going to be? I can't wait for you to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and right about there. And if you did have something in there that would give you something to push against too, that would help. All right, so now his eyeballs. <laughs> and of course you could have them going in different directions or just looking you know, straight, but off to the side. He's looking at something cute. So, you know, I'm taking my, okay, and I wanted to be right on that outside edge, and I, I can see I wasn't. So let me try again. Okay, I really want to be out here. Um, I'm not touching them because I don't want to take away from their extreme stickiness. And if I did touch them, that would do it. All right, let's not press down yet because I want to make sure of my placement. So let's try again. Let's, I'm in the light, let's make sure I go to that outside edge. I got so busy talking, I was just putting them on. <laughs> okay, we're along that outside. And this one, I want to go in the same, that he's looking over the same. They're not quite centered, so that's why I didn't want to press down yet, because I still have some forgiveness until I do that. Okay. And that's looking pretty good edge to edge. And I want a little gap in between for his beak or bill. Okay. And see, this tucks up in here. And then down. <laughs> Let's get that centered. Oh, so cute. And then when we add his wings, too adorable. All right, so let's again... I did it out like this. I don't have much holding to it, so we're going to go down his body. So um, let's keep it to the edge. So we have a couple of points of contact. Actually, three wouldn't even hurt. See there. So I would like it out a little bit. Great. 
and I caught all of those on here and have that out a little bit. If it were straight down, it would be okay, but I really like that pushing out a little bit. So one more. Let's keep them to the outside edge. Isn't this cute? Um, the, this paper has the early espresso in it. So let's make sure we hit all of those. Okay, I need to come over here a little bit. This one needs to come in. Let's move the whole thing. There we go. So all of them are getting touched. There we go. Cute, cute, cute is he. <laughs> so if you'd like to make my easy and adorable owl um, treat holder, well, you need to order the square pillow box thinlets die and this and all the products I use to make this are available in my online store and you'll find a link to each of them underneath the video. So I sure hope you enjoyed my square pillow box thinlets die. Order the products you need in my online store www.shopwithshelly.com. I'm Shelly Godby teaching you how to create hand stamp smiles. Thanks for watching.